Hello, and welcome to another Health Essentials Podcast. I'm John Horton, your host. When you were little, remember how you used to worry about monsters lurking under your bed or in the dark corners of your room? Well, turns out you may have been onto something. Bedrooms serve as a prime stomping ground for dust mites, mold, and, and a host of other allergens. A truly terrifying reality if you have asthma or allergies. These hidden irritants can make your life miserable. So how can you protect yourself and your family? That's what we're going to find out today from pediatric immunologist, John McDonald. Dr. McDonald is one of the many experts at Cleveland Clinic who pop into our weekly podcast to share information that you can trust to live a healthier life. Now let's go on a monster hunt and eliminate some pretty scary allergens. Dr. McDonald, thank you so much for joining us today. It's great to have you on the podcast. Oh, it's great to be here, John. Thanks. So, so as you go about it in, in your in your job as an immunologist, I, I'm guessing that you see a lot of people that have uh, asthma and allergy issues. Um, how do you go about trying to uh, find the source of that for people? Well, the first thing we always do is try to figure out, um, based on their history, what are their most likely triggers for their allergies or asthma. And then once we get a sense of that, there's a, a variety of different tests we can do, including skin prick testing and blood testing and a different kind of asthma testing we can do to narrow things down. Okay. All right. Well, then it sounds like, I mean, for the most part, when you go looking for those triggers, um, it leads us right into our main topic here, which is uh, how bedrooms are a main source of, of some of those. Um, why is that? Why are bedrooms so high on that list as far as uh, places where they're they're hanging out? Yeah, I think it's a couple things. One is that you spend a lot of your day in your bedroom, including when you're sleeping, and your immune system doesn't get a pass just because you're asleep. It still has to be dealing with allergens and things like that. So you're in your room a lot, and some of the things in your in your room, like the bedding and things like that, are conducive to allergens kind of of hanging out. Um, and then also different home allergy triggers, especially cats and dogs, sometimes are in the same room with you um, and, and potentially increasing the allergy burden in that place. So it's just a bunch of factors that kind of line up together to create a problem. You brought up uh, cats and dogs. I mean, what are some of the, the main allergens that just get, um, get everything going? Well, we think about like um, allergy allergens as being perennial or, or, or seasonal. And so in terms of perennial year-long allergens, cats, dogs, any kind of pet that you might have that sheds um, is potentially a perennial allergen for you. Also molds, um, dust, dust mite. There's two types of dust mites that people can be allergic to. And in um, certain environments, cockroaches can be a problem. And it's not an issue with cleanliness in the house. It's more just they're there and some people get allergic to them. Now, I know I saw some studies, and you had mentioned cleaning, because you think that you could just get rid of these. Um, but I saw it, no matter how much you clean, I mean, odds are these are still hanging around somewhere in your house. For sure. Um, and you could spend a whole bunch of money just randomly cleaning your house, doing your absolute best. But if you're not targeting the exact allergens you want to get rid of, it might not be as effective. All right. Well, let's talk about how we can target those then, because obviously we want to evict those allergens and not have them hanging around uh, causing all these problems. Um, so we're looking at the bedroom. Let's talk about uh, hypoallergenic bedding, which I know is always a big thing uh, for people. Um, does that work? Yeah, there's bedding that is designed, for example, to keep dust mites um, to keep dust mites out. And there, there's evidence that that works. And like, we know that dust mites need a certain amount of warmth and humidity to survive. And some of that warmth and humidity comes from your face, for example, while you're sleeping on the pillow. So dust mite encasements are really good, um, for people who have a dust mite allergy. Also some things like, you know, restricting the carpet use in your room. Like if you have a hardwood floor from an allergy standpoint, it's much better to have, a hardwood floor than a, a carpet where dust, for example, can hang in there. Um, other things in your room is just keeping your window closed, especially if you're in a seasonal allergy kind of time of year where pollens might be um, blowing in through the window. You want to make sure that, that your window is closed. And then other things that people try that seem helpful are using HEPA filters that can help um, as well. And decreasing your humidity to less than 50% is pretty helpful too. Wow. What does the humidity do? Like when you cut that down, how does that, how does that help? It's mostly for dust mites. They can't survive unless it's very humid or at least above a certain level of humidity. 
which is why the only places in the world where there's no dust mites causing allergy problems are locations with very low humidity naturally. So by cutting the humidity down, it deprives those mites of the kind of the environment they need to survive. Okay. Um, you know, you, we're looking at things that you can do. We like to give people um, some actionable items that they can take away from the podcast. Um, what are some other things, especially with, with kids? Um, I, I'd imagine stuffed animals are a major, um, could be a major spot for allergens. Yeah. So especially the stuffed animals, a lot of times I know in my house, I have some kids with a ton of stuffed animals in their bedroom, but if they were showing symptoms, we'd want to get those stuffed animals out of there. Um, washing the bedding weekly in hot water um, and, and, and drying it on a hot setting um, is an important thing, and that can help decrease the allergen burden. Um, if you have a cockroach problem, um, there's insecticides and things like that that you can use. But the important thing is, um, is trying to kind of decrease those exposures, but realizing that it can take time for that to happen. For example, a cat and dog will, will have, especially cats, even if you get rid of the cat, um, you know, it'll be like six months or so what, with that cat dander and stuff still around in your environment. Yeah, I, it is amazing how long that can last. I know my wife has a big allergy to cats and um, we had neighbors that had a, a couch that they had from an old house where they used to have a cat. And it was years ago and she used to go over there and every single time she'd start sneezing. So it's really that powerful. For sure. Yeah, it can last a long time. They're very tenacious. Some of these allergens, they just stick around forever. Okay. Um, you had mentioned stuffed animals and I, I know you said as far as like kind of removing them. Um, I've had three kids and I know there were stuffed animals that there was no way I could pry them away. Momo the moose was not leaving my, my one son. So if, if you do have a situation like that, like how can you, I guess, take the stuffed animal and maybe I say treat it, um, take it to the stuffed animal hospital here. What can we do to get rid of the allergens? I mean, potentially you could, you could wash that particular animal a lot. You could see if there's any dust mite covers that might fit on it. Um, or you could just say, look, the kid gets one or two favorite animals. We'll do our best with those. But otherwise, the dust animal, the dust, potentially dust filled animals and things will be up away from the kid. Um, also, you know, you want to verify that they even have a problem with dust allergy first. So before we would ever try to say, take away the kids um, stuffed toys, we'd want to know, do they really have a dust allergy where that's going to help? Or are we just being mean? And so that's where allergy testing comes in to verify what your allergens are. Yeah. When should you go in and kind of seek that sort of, um, I guess, that verified opinion and, and really find out what you're allergic to? I think if you're using allergy medicine on a daily basis, especially if that medicine is not controlling your symptoms, it's reasonable to come in and see an allergist. Um, we can test you whether you're on antihistamines or not. We have different strategies for testing. We can tell you what you're allergic to, and then it can help you even if you don't want to um, even if you don't want to be on a whole bunch of medicine per se, it will help you to know because knowing is half the battle. And um, knowing you can get your house cleaned up the way you need to without spending extra money on things you don't need. All right, uh, Dr. McDonald, uh, before we say goodbye, is there anything else you'd like to add about allergies in the home or what you can do to uh, com combat them? I think the main thing is getting tested if you're concerned you have an allergy to something specific. Most likely we have a way to test for that. And, and getting that testing preferably before you spend a fortune on cleaning up your house. Certainly simple things like washing bedding a couple times a week. I mean, you can start doing that right away. But for more expensive home remediation strategies, if you're pulling up carpet, for example, and things like that, just come in and see us first so we can do the testing and tell you what you're allergic to. Uh, great advice, Dr. McDonald. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, looking forward to having you back. All right. Thank you. No matter how clean your house is, allergens are probably present. And that can cause major issues for anyone with asthma or allergies. Hopefully, these tips from Dr. McDonald can help you breathe a little easier while you're at home. Till next time, be well.